Hello everyone and welcome to Body Bags. I'll be your reviewer for today. I'm Lonnie from Horror Heaven 77 and um, yeah we're gonna definitely talk about a different kind of vampire movie today. Uh, just when you think you've seen it all, just when you think you've seen every kind of vampire movie that there could be, you know there you know you got vampire you got your traditional vampire movies like Dracula and stuff you know where they feed on people's blood and then you know you have stuff like you know sleepwalkers which is meant to be something of a quasi vampire movie where they feed off the life force of people and things like that there you go there's another movie you know vampire movie with life force you know space vampires things like that but oh boy um this one's going to be kind of interesting to talk about um today we're going to talk about the 1973 excuse me the 1973 dress franco film female vampire also has a alternate version called erotic kill and uh yeah guys i think what's uh, if you haven't seen this movie and um you know you haven't seen this movie you don't own this movie or anything possibly by the time i get done explaining this movie to you you're going to be getting online and ordering it as fast as you can uh, the movie stars Lena Romay. If you you know if you're a Jess Franco fan and you you watch a lot of his movies, Jess Franco's wife Lena Romay. She always played a very large part in a many number of his films, and uh, especially when Jess Franco was kind of veering away from from kind of like mainstream filmmaking and just going more and more into just kind of sleaze and softcore exploitation kind of filmmaking. And Lena Lena Romay would be uh, basically the centerpiece of all of his films, and this is definitely one of them. Uh, in the movie, she plays the Countess Irina Karlstein. Um, I don't know if that's supposed to be some kind of a play on you know like Frankenstein or anything like that. I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't matter because it's never really explained. And uh, she's a vampire, and it's explained through narration that uh, she's been a vampire for you know many 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 centuries and, and you know she's alone and she lives in solitude and she's not really able to have anybody be with her um, you know because the way she ends up getting blood from her victims honestly uh, and I swear to God I'm not making this up go get this movie and watch it you'll see what but watch the hundred minute version um, female vampire not the 70 minute version of Rodicule. Uh, watch the hundred female minute hundred female hundred minute version female vampire, and you'll see that in this movie uh, she doesn't you know usually like how do vampires get their you know how do they get their blood you know from their victims they bite them on the neck they maybe like you know bite them on the wrist or something like that you know that's usually where they go to bite their victims. Uh, it's a little bit different here because uh, Irina gets her blood through oral sex you heard me yeah I'm not making this up she gets her blood from her victims through oral sex uh, the very opening of the movie we see a farmer in a field and just kind of you know having his basic just kind of regular day and all this and you know, just working outside and then all of a sudden out of the mist he sees uh, Irina you know Lena Romay's character she comes toward him. She's got kind of like the cape on, and she has, I think she's wearing like thigh high boots, and she has like a belt across her waist, and that's all she's wearing. You know, it's like, in, um, that's one thing you're going to notice about this movie is uh, hopefully, if you're going to watch this movie, hopefully you like Lena Romay, and hopefully you enjoy looking at Lena Romay because that is a lot of this movie. This movie is very, very very voyeuristic a lot of this movie is franco showing off lena romay's body and even going into extreme close-ups to show off her body so you get to see everything i'm not a, nothing at all is left to the imagination so irina she comes up on this guy and she starts to seduce him she goes down and you know she's giving him oral sex and when he's about to go that's when she takes the blood from him and there you go he's dead and then uh and one thing that's interesting is like certain people come throughout the movie um jess franco does make an appearance in this movie as he's done in many of his movies 
he does make an appearance. He's playing something of a, like a, I guess he's intended to be kind of a Van Helsing vampire hunter kind of a character. But the problem with this is it ends up ultimately ends up going nowhere. I mean, just nothing comes of it. And, um, you know, I hate to say it too. I mean, I know I kind of go off on these little tangents here, but I hate to say it too. But like one thing about Jess Franco, for a guy who made a number of vampire movies, he really doesn't seem to know anything about them. And what I mean by that is, um, in this movie and in his other, I've noticed in some of his other vampire movies as well. You know, I mean, usually vampires, you know, there's the lore of vampires, like they're supposed to not go out in the daytime. In this movie, Irina, she's like a lot of the movie is just her walking around in the daytime. You know, she's in these, she's like in this beautiful mansion, and she's just walking around, and it's like the windows are wide open, sunlight, you know, streaming in. And she's able to walk around, no problem. She's outside walking around in the daytime. And so it's like, you know, apparently, like, that doesn't uh, have a problem. She, she has no problem with that. Crucifixes, I don't even think are even brought up. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's been a little bit since the last time I've seen this movie. But uh, I do believe that, you know, like, mirrors are not a problem. Because usually vampires don't cast a reflection in a mirror. Uh, I want to say, I think that... Um, yeah, I think that the, there's, you know, well, here's the thing. Like, every other scene is is basically a uh, Lena Romay masturbation scene. And what I mean by that is, like, she meets a character. Uh, she meets a character. You know, they have sex. Or, you know, she gives them oral sex, and she ends up, you know, killing them, drinking their blood from them. Then the next scene is basically a Lena Romay masturbation scene. Then the next scene is her meeting another character, and... Um, you know, do, you know, doing oral sex on them and getting her blood from them. Then the next scene is another Lena Romay masturbation scene and on and on and on. And that pretty much goes continuously through the whole movie. Um, but if I remember correctly, I think there were scenes in the movie where she is masturbating and she's even looking at her reflection in a mirror. So it's like mirrors have no, I guess mirrors are not a big deal, you know. Uh, crosses, like I said, I don't think are brought up. You know, nothing about garlic or silver or any of that kind of stuff. So she definitely does not follow the conventional vampire. Which, I mean, I guess it's okay for this movie, but when, you know, you look at some of Franco's other vampire movies and it follows the same thing, but um, it's, it's not a different breed of vampire, It's it does kind of, like, stick in your mind. It's like, nah, it's not really much of a vampire movie, is it? Um but uh, at one point, there's a man who believes that she's, like, the love of his life, and, and she's, like, the ultimate woman, and there will never be another woman like her, and he has to be with her no matter what the cost. And so eventually, uh, he does win her over, and they get together. You know, they, they have, you know, a sexual liaison, which, you know, ends up with her, you know, <clears throat> her giving him oral sex, and she ends up killing him. Um there's a scene with where she's talking to a reporter and the reporter's asking her these questions and you know you know Irina just is you know she doesn't really talk you know she never really says anything her her character is very silent like any of her thoughts or emotions or anything like that always comes out through narration but um so yeah she's sitting there talking to her and and uh, she just doesn't say anything and then uh, this this reporter, you know, she goes off and she's fantasizing about her and, and she's crying because she wants to be with her. And then ultimately she, you know, Irina appears and they start to go into a girl on girl scene. And then, you know, ultimately uh, it ends up with Irina going down on this female reporter and she ends up killing her, you know, and stuff. And then, like I said, it's just pretty much that way throughout the whole movie. And, uh, you know, you do introduce Jess Franco as, as a uh, female, or as, a, as like a vampire hunter, vampire killer, a Van Helsing type. But like I said, just unfortunately it doesn't go anywhere. And I think the one thing that's kind of fun about this movie is like it's really, you know, I can't sit here and really be like, you know, oh, I can't, I can't tell you too much because it'd be spoiling the ending. This movie really has no ending, to be honest with you. It's just, like I say, it's just one scene after another. It really is just kind of softcore. Um, it's just one scene of her getting with a person and, you know, giving them moral sex and then killing them. 
then the masturbation scene, then another person, then another masturbation scene, and on and on and on. And that's literally pretty much how the whole movie goes. Um, would I recommend this movie? If you're looking for a really good vampire movie, no. No, I would not. Um, like I said, it doesn't follow any of the, 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 lore, <clears throat> the lore or the conventions of vampires. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, it's not a particularly entertaining film. There's not really, it doesn't really keep up any kind of a pace. It's, there's a lot of just kind of scenes of just, uh, Irina just kind of wandering around too. And she just kind of walking along and you hear the narration and stuff like that. Uh, the music score is really nice. It does have a really beautiful music score. I'll give it that. But just, you know, um, like the movie really is, just, it, it really is, it's just softcore. That's really all it is. I mean, you could get a more like conventional version if you watch the 70-minute version of Rodekill. Like, you know, maybe if you were looking for more of a traditional vampire movie, maybe go with something like that. But as far as, like, uh, this movie goes, like, you know, the only reason I would recommend this movie, number one, it, just if, okay, like, number one, if you just want to get Jess Franco movies in your collection, okay, go ahead and do that. Uh, but just don't expect a masterpiece because it's definitely not. Um, number two, um, you know, you got the hots for Lena Romay, then yeah, I definitely recommend picking this movie up because you're gonna, you know, if you're like, if you're one of these guys, like Lena Romay is one of my ultimate crushes. She's like one of my ultimate fantasy women and stuff like that. Then yeah, you're definitely going to want this movie. This movie will definitely, um, this movie is definitely going to be one that's going to be high up in your collection. Um, also too, I would, you know, yeah, you could go ahead and get this movie if you just like the idea of, um, you know, adult vampire films, like you could do it for that. But I mean, just as far as like, if you wanted like a mainstream kind of conventional vampire story and stuff, no, I really don't recommend this movie at all. Um, but, um, you know, and the thing is, it's like, I kind of feel like Jess Franco really missed an opportunity with this movie. And what I mean by that is, you know, you could have taken that concept and you know the idea of a of a vampire, a female vampire, who gets her blood from her victims through uh, oral sex. Like you could have taken that concept and you really could have run with that. You could have done. You could have. You could have made a movie that okay, it may not have been mainstream, but you could have made a movie that would have really become a cult classic. I mean, really get out there. Um, you could have made. You know, you could have taken this concept and maybe do like a comedy with it. You know, you could say, okay, I'm going to do this vampire movie. And the whole point is, is like, I want to do like the porkies of vampire movies. And there you go. You're off and running. Okay. Um, you could have put a, a lot of good jokes. This movie's not funny. You know, um, like I said, it's just, it's just titillating. That's all, that's all this movie really is, you know. Um, but you could have made some good jokes about it. You know, you could have really like turned this into a real like cult comedy kind of a film you could you still could have kept it sexy and erotic and keep you know some nudity and stuff in there but you could have gone that way or another way you could have gone is to you know say okay you know i want to make one of those kind of movies that's really gonna like gnaw on people's minds you know kind of like really make them afraid you know in the sense of like how nightmare on elm street you know made people afraid to go to sleep you know Nightmare on Elm Street made people afraid of dreams, you know, and stuff like that. Um, Psycho made people afraid of, you know, taking a shower. Jaws made people afraid of going to the beach. Tremors made people afraid of what was underneath the ground and stuff like that. Um, you know, I mean, you really could have said, hey, you know, I think, you know, I think we could really make a movie that's going to really like stick in people's heads because, hey, who doesn't love, you know, good oral sex, you know, and that kind of thing. And uh, we could have made a movie that really would have, you know, like, put the scare into people, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, you could have made a movie that really would have gone on for years and been talked about and been discussed and, you know, maybe not seen in the most favorable light, but, you know, you could have definitely made a movie that would have stood the test of time and people would be talking about it even to this day. And, of course, saying I'm saying this, you know, and here I am today talking about this movie. But, but just, um, yeah, um... I would say just for sleaze factor, that would be about the biggest reason I could recommend this movie. Um, other than that, like if you're hoping for a real like gothic hammer horror vampire movie or something like that, you're not going to get it with this. So. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, um, let's see, show you the back here. Like 
There you go, some Lena Romay for you. I mean, if that interests you and you're you're interested in seeing a lot of that, then I say, yeah, run out and, well, you know, I think the only way really you can get this movie is online, but, you know, get on here, order this movie, and, you know, enjoy yourself. So, so anyway, that's uh, pretty much going to do it. So if anybody took the time to watch this, I thank you for doing it. I appreciate you for doing it. I honestly hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, please leave a like. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the Body Bags channel. We have a different reviewer, one for every day of the week. I'm the Friday reviewer. Uh, everybody's doing great, great guys. Everybody's doing good stuff, you know, fun weeks ahead. And so, yeah, so um, everybody take care. Have a good night, and uh, I'll see you later.